So again, um, once again, welcome to the class of insurance law. Today is a session two, and we are going to learn chapter two today. That is the types of uh, insurance. Last class, we had an introductory class and we learned about what is insurance and uh, what is actually uh, insurance law. Now, insurance, as we have all learned last during the last class, that it is a type of risk management where, uh, you know, there is a risk of a loss that is transferred from one party to another, basically from the insured to the insurer. And insurer, in case of insurance contracts, is normally insurance companies, where the insurance companies, you know, transfer the risk upon themselves in case some something uh, you know a risk particular that they apprehend happens so this is basically about insurance and when you're talking about contract uh, we said that it's a contract where one party that is the insurer undertakes in return of a particular consideration and in insurance we call it as premium to pay the other party a sum of money or a particular amount which is equivalent to you know the uh, which could be calculatively equivalent to the happening of a particular event. I gave you an example of, uh, you know, I give an example of car insurance and I said that you insurance a car against all accidents and so on. So why do we insurance? Why do we, uh, you know, uh, why do we purchase insurance? Or what is the purpose of insurance? Again, last class as an introduction, I said that the purpose of insurance is to basically reduce financial uncertainty and uh, make certain losses and risks manageable. So basically, the, the, how it operates is where the insured, there are you know uh, people normally purchase this insurance policy, so that allows pooling of resources or pooling of finances. Um, in the hands of the insurance company and then when the inevitable or something that is inadvertent or something that uh, was uh, apprehended if what or something that is contingent occurs then the insurance company releases that funds which you as an insurer uh, sorry you as an insured have paid to the insurance company in the form of premium so today we will learn about types of insurance. Even before I open the slide, I'm sure you would you already know what are the different types of insurance. Even before I tell you, I'm sure you have heard of life insurance. Then you have heard of um, motor vehicle insurance, property insurance, credit insurance, uh, you know, insurances that are take or corporate insurance and so on. Let us go through our slides now and understand the concept of insurance and the types of insurance in detail. So we will learn about the types of insurance and certain legal principles that revolve around the concept of insurance. So, of course, the type of insurance, it varies from country to country. That is, from one country to another, there may be different types of insurance because there are different laws prevalent in different countries. And, and again, laws vary from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. So, likewise, I mean, the, the, the type of insurances that are available in different countries, they might vary from one country to another. However, broadly, it can be categorized as, broadly speaking, uh, the types of insurance that are available in different countries are, of course, life insurance. Life insurance is the most prominent insurance that is like, you know, available worldwide. In fact, every country knows about most of the countries are aware of life insurance. So life insurance policy is basically a policy that ensures contingencies related to life of a person. And this form of insurance does not comport with the general indemnity principle. That means it is does not revolve around a normal general indemnity principle. What is indemnity? That is indemnity or to indemnify means to make good the loss that is occurred to someone else. So, for example, we say A indemnifies the loss of goods, uh, uh, loss of goods that is, uh, you know, due to some accident that has occurred to B, for example. So he indemnifies the loss. That means he makes good the loss. He covers the loss. So 
here we are saying that this form of insurance does not comport. It's it's not necessarily like a general indemnity insurance or something that the principle of indemnity can be applied here. Um, uh, it, it is not really, but it is something different because this involves the risk of losing life. So this is related to life of a person. So the di different categories of life insurance, such as term insurance, where in the sum assured is disbursed upon um, the death of the insured within the specified term. So there is something called as term insurance under life insurance policy. That is, the amount of insurance will be released upon the death of the person. There's also something called as endowment insurance. And in this case, the amount is disbursed upon maturity of the particular insurance or also upon the death of the insured or and or upon the death of the insured. Next is whole life insurance. Now, this is another type of insurance under life insurance, which is paid upon the death of the person, no matter when the death occurs and the premiums may be paid during the life period or for a specified period, depending upon the terms agreed. Next is single premium life insurance is where the entire premium is paid lump sum by the insured. Uh, like, for example, children's policies, joint life policies are examples of single life premium life insurance. Next is health insurance. So what is this health insurance? Again, this is something that I'm sure you're aware of. Health insurance policy is a policy obtained by the insured to cover securing health expenses such as disease or injury. Like in some countries or jurisdiction, obtaining a health insurance policy is mandatory for every citizen as well as resident. For example, talking about Abu Dhabi in United Arab Emirates, it mandates for a health insurance policy to be obtained by every resident and citizen, which may be covered by the employer the person is employed. So in certain uh, countries health insurance or obtaining a health insurance policy is a must so the example of it i've given you is abu dhabi in united arab emirates next is general property insurance now as the name itself suggests general property insurance covers assets and is based on the principle of indemnity what is indemnity as i told you to indemnify means to make good that loss that has occurred to make good or to cover up the loss. So the principle of indemnity. So general property insurance covers assets and this insurance is based upon the principle of indemnity. And the purpose of this insurance is to bring the insured to shield the investment made in the property. For example, say homeowners insurance, home insurance or you know fire insurance, title insurance, crop insurance for farmers. So these may be brought within the ambit. Next is property insurance may have three levels of coverage. That is one, to the extent of actual cash value or two, replacement cost that is for rebuilding or repairs or three is guaranteed or extended replacement cost. So again, I'm reiterating property. When you're talking about property insurance, they normally have three levels of coverage. Now the insurance company will cover, cover a particular, uh, you know, loss at three levels. One is to the extent of actual cash value. What is the cash value of the property? So to, to that level, probably, uh, you know, a person would prefer to cover the particular property and would say that, yes, I prefer purchasing an insurance policy that would covers the actual value of my property. Second is replacement cost. Sometimes insurance, uh, property insurance, maybe to the extent of covering just the replacement cost, for example, to the extent of rebuilding a particular uh, property or repairs that or renovation that needs to be carried out. Next is guaranteed or extended replacement cost with it, which is, um, you know, an extension of coverage than the normal coverage that is available under the replacement cost property insurance. Next is transit insurance. Again, as the name itself suggests, transit, that means something, something pertaining to transport. So transit insurance covers goods in transit. That is, uh, while the goods are being transported, it could be by air, it could be by sea, or it could be by road. Goods that are shipped by marine cargo are covered under marine insurance. And likewise, by air is covered by air cargo insurance. And if it is by road, it is covered by a broad spectrum of transit insurance. 
Next is travel insurance. Travel insurance, of course, uh, I mean, when you travel to certain countries, obtaining a travel insurance is mandatory, while some other countries may not mandate, uh, uh, you know, a traveler or um, a tourist from holding a travel insurance. However, mostly, uh, you know, travelers, they prefer having a travel insurance. So travel insurance covers travel baggage loss, repatriation, that is, what is repatriation? Suppose a person, uh, you know, loses his life while he is traveling. There are many cases uh, where it just happens that a person, uh, you know, gets a heart attack while he or she is traveling in the flight. So in midair, sometimes they get a heart attack. It ha there has been several cases like that. Uh, so suppose it, you know, you know, suppose a passenger is traveling and he dies. So, you know, repatriation expenses is normally covered under travel insurance. Or say a person already has reached some other destination, has gone on a um, tourist visa to some other country, and then there something happens, or say he, meet, he or she meets with an accident, and then, of course, then he dies. So then what happens? So the expenses that would incur to repatriate the dead body of the person you see so travel insurance covers this this particular aspect of repatriation costs so apart from the travel insurance would also cover health of the traveler and so and suppose a person falls sick in some other country then he goes to the doctor so when he goes to the doctor so he need not pay the entire uh, amount or fees that are charged for the doctor but probably a, a particular percentage of amount according to the type of travel insurance that he has and according to the coverage. Next is motor insurance. Now, what is motor insurance? Again, as the name suggests, it's quite easy. And I'm sure you would understand what is motor insurance. That is, in certain countries, of course, it is mandatory insurance. In most countries, rather, I should say, it is a mandatory or a compulsory insurance, which are in consonance or which are aligned with the traffic laws in most jurisdictions domestically as well as internationally that covers motor vehicle thefts, accidents and the allied which may be comprehensive insurance or specific insurance such as collision insurance that is accidents or PIP that is personal injury protection etc. So apart from that, it involves also third party insurance because generally as per the law, the owner of a vehicle actually is you know legally liable to compensate for the loss injury or damage to any other person's life or property and you know property road users and their passengers or the public because of the accident why because of the negligent driving or otherwise that may be caused by the vehicle so yet another concept under this is gap insurance so this gap insurance which comes under motor insurance is insurance that covers the gap or the difference between the car loan and the actual value of the car. So this is one aspect of motor insurance. And apart from that, we have gap insurance under motor insurance. Next is group insurance. Now, again, as the name itself suggests, group insurance, I'm sure you'll be able to surmise by the name itself, that it covers a particular class or group of individuals or company or employees. And the benefit of it is that the cost is distributed and made reasonable. So hence it is cost effective. Now a group insurance plan revolves around contributory principle of insurance where each member may pay all or some part of the premium. Next is project related insurance. Now this again depends upon the type of project. What is the project, whether it's a commercial project, construction project, or it is, um, you know, this charitable project, whatever type of project, a professional project, whatever type of project it is. So there are project related insurances that are available in the insurance sector as well. For example, could be personal indemnity insurance or, you know, professional indemnity. Apart from that, it is, there is professional indemnity insurance i'm not mentioned in the slide here you can take it down one is personal indemnity insurance the other one is professional indemnity insurance etc next is credit insurance now this credit insurance is obtained in case of loans or credit schemes which is obtained by the insured from any financial institution or banks 
again, an interesting insurance here is pet insurance that covers the medical expenses for animals or birds that a person might have in their homes as pets. Next is umbrella insurance. Now, what is umbrella insurance? Again, that can be a broad insurance cover for a set of properties as well as person's reputation against libel or slander. What is libel or slander? That comes under the laws of defamation. What is defamation? Where a person engages in any conversation or in writing to defame a person or to, you know, past derogate remarks that can be defaming or insulting to a person so that would constitute in case it is verbal that would constitute slander and in case it is in writing it would constitute libel so this is a defamation the concept of defamation sometimes a person might uh, you know uh, have even his uh, you know reputation covered uh, under the concept of umbrella insurance where he is protected or you know, sometimes even the company's goodwill is protected or an individual person's reputation is protected against libel or slander, etc. Next is earthquake or flood insurance or natural calamity insurance. Now, again, as the name suggests, it's quite easy for you to understand. In case an area is prone to a particular natural disaster, then they may opt for such insurances that will enable them to reconstruct their houses or property in case of a loss as a result of natural calamity. For example, you, I'm sure you're aware that some of the countries are located in a particular area of the earth that are more prone to earthquakes. Like, for example, say certain places in Japan, example, just an example, or some areas or some parts of the world are more prone to, say, volcanoes, or some parts of the world are more prone to forest fires. So depending upon the type of calamity that any particular area is more prone to, they might procure or they might go in for such kind of insurance such as earthquake or flood insurance or any other natural calamity insurance, be it volcanoes or whatever. Next is general liability insurance. What is general liability insurance? Now, general liability insurance is the insurance that covers businesses, enterprises, and even properties. Now, it may tend to exclude coverage for you know, riot-related or war injuries because the risk is actually far-flung, it is broad, and thus it is difficult to be calculated. So when it is broad, it's comprehensive, and it is difficult to be calculated. So they just try to bring it under a bracket and call it as general liability insurance. Now, a commercial general liability insurance, or CGL, may cover a wide range of risks, including advertisements, risks of libel or slander. Again, your libel or slander means where an offense or a wrong of defamation is committed. Now, if you just want to know more about it, what is defamation? Defamation comes under the law of torts, T-O-R-T, the law of tort. I'm not sure whether you learned the subject already. The law of tort, tort is a civil wrong. So defamation, defaming a person, talking ill about a person that may, or casting spurs against a person that might tarnish the image of someone or tarnish or bring down the reputation of somebody. That would constitute the wrong of slander, that is defamation. Defamation is of two types, libel or slander. When it is in writing, it's libel. And when it is uh, you know, in spoken words or verbal, it is slander. So defamation, just for your information, can be a civil wrong that comes under the law of tort, or it can also be you know, a criminal offense, depending upon the type of jurisdiction, because some countries in the world consider defamation as a criminal offense. For example, um, India. India considers uh, defamation as a criminal offense for uh, for which there is punishment to the extent of imprisonment as well as a pecuniary penalty that is where a fine is imposed on the person who is the accused and is proved as the offender. So that is in case of some countries, for example, India, We're talking about Australia, for example, Australia, some parts of Australia consider defamation as a crime, whereas some parts of Australia consider it as a civil wrong. Again, coming back to India, India considers defamation as both a civil wrong as well as 
a crime and in India, a single case can be, I mean, not a single case, of course, two cases can be filed concurrently along with, you know, a criminal case can run concurrently along with a civil case. Probably sometimes they might put a particular case on hold till the other case is proved, but, you know, a party has got the right to file both criminal as well as a civil case of definition. This is just for your information. Coming back to the concept of general liability insurance, here we are talking about commercial liability insurance that companies may cover a wide range of risks, including advertisement risk of uh, libel or slander that may affect the goodwill of the company. Yes, very good. Okay, so you got the law of thought and defamation. Very good. That means you've already learned it. That's nice, Ruvida. So that's great. Thank you. So that means you understand what is defamation. And uh, so if you're talking about your country, so you know the extent of uh, like how the extent of its operation there in your country. And also if you just compare it to the general liability insurance, I'm sure you understand. Well, uh, so now let's move on to business insurance. What is business insurance? Now, this includes commercial insurance or even mandated by law, such as workman's compensation insurance or, you know, uh, commercial auto insurance, director's liability insurance, etc. So some insurance companies may even offer KPL uh, insurance that is key person life insurance that is if a key employee dies, then the risks that may overshadow the company may be covered under such a policy. Next is malpractice insurance covers professional liability. So malpractice normally sometimes it just happens that any professional can commit an inadvertent mistake. For example, it could be any professional. It could be a doctor, a lawyer, a consultant, or an engineer, or other specialist against, uh, you know, against, and against them, there can be suits or cases which allege negligence or professional errors uh, or omissions that have inflicted harm on their clients. For example, this is quite common when it comes to doctors. Doctors, for example, say they have administered a wrong medication. And as a result, there are a number of examples of this. Again, I'm sure since you've already studied the law of thought, you must have studied about negligence. You must have studied about the chapter on negligence. And again, under that, you must have already studied medical negligence. So now the type of insurance that covers such kind of negligence when it comes to professional doctors is professional uh, liability insurance. So professional indemnity or professional liability insurance which is covered, or it's in some countries it's called as malpractice insurance. Categorically, you can call it as malpractice insurance or professional uh, liability insurance when it comes to any professional for that matter. Where I have given you the example of doctors, but it could be lawyers, it could be physicians, of course, doctors, consultants, and other specialists, engineers, or whatever. Next is tort liability insurance. Now, tort is a civil wrong. Again, as Ruvida has also thrown some light saying that you have studied about the subject, so you know that tort is a civil wrong. That is, when a person inflicts some harm or a damage upon another person, then the tort feeser, who is a tort feeser? The one who commits the tort, the one who commits a civil wrong, is expected to make good the loss and or compensate for the loss caused harm inflicted to the aggrieved person. So in this context, if the tort feeser, the defendant in the case of torts, has a current tort liability insurance, then such a policy would support the tort fees, uh, the defendant in the case to pay for the damages that may be awarded by the court, the defense, legal costs, and the allied. Next is workplace tort is a civil wrong which is committed within the workplace that may give rise to an employee's cause of action against this employer. There can be, you know, workplace tort again in terms of passing uh, disparaging remarks or casting aspirations against any of the other colleagues or they can be demotion, defamation and so on. So these kind of tort liability insurance is also covered when it comes to works, work spots. So thereby, there are several types of insurances, and there are still some more depending upon country to country, region to region. And well, the concept of insurance is 
continuing to evolve. It has been evolving over the years and it is still continuing to evolve with the advancement and the risks that the world is advancing with. For example, not talking about risk, the best example of this is like, you know, terrorism, like talking about the heart-wrenching episode of September 11 terrorist attack to the Twin Towers at New York City, which alarmed the entire world. So this incident, particular incident of September 11, it promoted the insurance industry to cover losses as a result of terrorist attacks as well and the insurance policy has a particular insurance policy has been designed to cover such losses as a result of terrorism so you see here what we are trying to say here is the the episode of september 11 attack you know propelled the creation of uh, a new type of insurance that is uh, terrorism insurance that seeks to cover losses as a result of terrorist attacks are you understanding me that is designed to cover such losses as a result of terrorist attack so there's one very interesting case here that is jeffrey w's temple the insurance aftermath that is uh, of september 11 of course in myriad claims multiple lines arguments over occurring counting boris exclusions so this uh, you know, extract the type of insurance that they have come up with has been taken from this particular citation. So it's mentioned in this particular case that, you know, they had to come up with this type of insurance called as terrorist or terrorism insurance. Next is, can warranty or guarantee come within the purview of the concept of insurance? Sometimes there may be an argument that a warranty or a guarantee provided to products, to commercial products, may operate under the principle of insurance scheme. So for this, in this, uh, you know, just to substantiate this uh, concept, I've just referred to a case that is State X Rel Duffy Attorney General versus Western Auto Supply Company, Ohio State that is in US. So the court held here in this case that a warranty or a guarantee issued to a purchaser in connection with the sale of goods containing an agreement to indemnify against loss or damage resulting from perils outside of and unrelated to inherent weakness in the goods themselves, it constitutes a contract substantially amounting to insurance. However, they say a written warranty, which is delivered to a person representing that the articles sold are so well and carefully manufactured that they will give satisfactory service under ordinary usage for a specified length of time and providing for an adjustment in the event of failure from faulty construction or materials, but expressly excluding happenings not connected with imperfections in the articles. Next is assignment of insurance policy. Normally, legal contracts contain a non-assignment clause. That means it cannot be assigned to someone else other than the contracting parties. That is, the terms and conditions of a contract are confined to the contracting parties and cannot be assigned to someone else that is a third party. So, for example, A and B are entering into a contract. That means the terms of the contract are confined to A and B. Now, C cannot come or B cannot say, okay, uh, okay, uh, A, I cannot do it, so I just give it to C unless A agrees for it. So uh, normally legal contracts contracts contain a non-assignment clause. However, in the case of group policy insurance, an individual insured group member may be provided an option of changing the beneficiary under the terms. Why we're talking about this? Because in, we are talking about insurance policy contracts. Insurance policy is a contract. So when we're talking in terms of contract, what we're trying to say here is generally in legal contracts, the terms and conditions are are non-assignable or cannot be assigned to someone else. However, when it comes to group insurance policy, an individual insured group member may be provided an option of changing the beneficiary under the terms, and this change has to be carefully executed because assignment of the policy would be considered as legally invalid because of the non-assignment clause in the policy. However, if such a non-assignment clause contravenes or goes against any prevailing law or a statute in any particular jurisdiction, then such a clause would be regarded as invalid and assignment would be honored under that particular insurance policy. That means they would say, yes, it's not a problem even if it is you know, assigned to some other person under a group insurance policy scheme. Then it is reflected in the particular T and C. 
Now, misleading statements may make the insured lose the claim. For example, a false or a misleading statement, a false or a misleading statement, I'm sorry, a false or a misleading statement by any insurance policy applicant may provide a basis for the underwriting team. That is, every insurance company has got an underwriting team. Um, so it may provide a basis for the underwriting team of the insurance company, the insurer, that is to prepare a report of negating the claim or, you know, or rejecting a claim and not settle the claim or ignore the claim. On the other hand, the insured is entitled to file a complaint against any prohibited sales practice exhibited by any insurance sales agent. So inducing a customer to purchase an insurance policy by false or misleading statement is a prohibited legal uh, sales practice. So uh, in the case of Bacon versus Federal Kemper Life Insurance Company, here, uh, it was held that, I mean, this was a case basically which involved a forged signature of a policyholder on the change of beneficiary form of a life insurance policy. Next, we'll talk about the reinstatement of lapsed policy or bringing or reviving a policy, reviving a expired insurance policy or reinstatement of lapsed policy and incontestability clause in insurance contract. Let's see what it is. So in case a policy lapses for non-payment of premium, it, it, you know, it lapses or it expires for non-payment of a premium, that is the amount that has to be paid by the insurer, by the insured on say maybe a monthly basis or on whatever basis, sometimes the, it might be paid monthly or it may be paid just all in one go. It depends upon the type of insurance. Now, in case a policy lapses for non-payment of premium, then the policyholder or the insured has the option to reinstate the policy. Now that he can, you know, revive the policy. So the insurer may reinstate the policy conditionally by setting forth compliance with certain terms. For example, losses during the period of lapse will not be covered. However, obviously, now, after the after the uh, the the you know insurance policy has lapsed so that means the insurance policy is not active so obviously if there are any losses that have incurred during the period of lapse will it be covered obviously not it it will not be covered because the insurance policy is not active so we are talking about when the insurance policy becomes inactive the policyholder can activate the insurance policy now, the question is, what about the losses during the period of the lapse or while the insurance policy was inactive? So obviously, here again, it is not going to be covered. However, if a statute prescribes reinstatement, that is a law prescribes reinstatement, then the insurance company is bound to extend the privilege to the insured without any conditions or exclusions. Depends upon, again, what are the terms of the policy, what country it is, what jurisdiction, and what are the laws that are prevalent in that particular country. But by and large, generally, losses during the period of lapse is not covered. But if there is a statute prescribing reinstatement, then the insurance company is bound to extend the privilege to the insured without any conditions or exclusions. Now, generally across most jurisdictions internationally, the courts are of the opinion that if the insurance contract reflects the insured's right of reinstatement, then the right shall bounce back as soon as the policyholder makes good the loss of lapse and the policy will be made effective or revives. Now, on the other hand, some courts across few jurisdictions are of the practice to permit reinstatement petition subject to the approval of the insurer who is expected to process the application as per the terms of the insurance contract and the policy set forth and agreed to be complied with by the parties. However, in normal circumstances, in the absence of any such clause or any existing governing statute or a law, reinstatement will be entirely subject to the approval of the insurer, that is insurance company, who might review the matter on a case-to-case -case basis that, that is depending upon the nature of the case or the type of case or depending upon the facts and circumstances of that particular case. Next is insurance contract terms against the public policy. Now, again, 
any insurance contract and insurance policy must be within the purview of law or the presence of law and not in contravention of any prevailing law, prevailing law, or even the principles of justice, equity, good conscience, and public policy. For this, I refer to a case where the court, that is La Orange versus Medical Protective Company, where the court observed that an insurance contract that is contrary to state public policy, no matter how clear and unambiguous may be, it can be illegal and it is considered as void. Why? Because it is against public policy. And the test here is whether it is injurious to public or it contravenes some important established social interests or when its purpose is to promote effective or it uh, uh, promotes or effects or encourages, in effect, promotes in effect or encourages a violation of the law. So this is all about the types of insurance and certain principles that revolve around the different types of insurance policy.